Welcome YouTubers. So today I'm going to spend a little time talking about uh, how odds makers set their odds, or at least how I don't think they set their odds. Um, and so this is a, uh, let me go to a couple websites here first. This one's Bet Firm, how sports bets setting their odds. So it's a pretty popular notion that out here the goal of the bookie is to have balanced action on the game. So the winners get paid by the losers, and Sportsbook collects the profit from the vigorish. So yeah, they, they say that, hey, the, the bookie um, wants to, or at least the odd maker, wants to balance their odds. So let me look at another website. Just to, I mean, you see this very popular, and it makes sense. Here I'm on gamblingfactsandfiction.com, which is just an anti-gambling site, basically. They tell you you can't win no matter what. But uh, here they say, again, they try to adjust, they being the, the sports bookie, they try to adjust the odds and point spread so you get equal betting on both teams, and then they make money regardless of wins and losses. So it makes sense that they would want to do that. And I've thrown this slide up in presentations before, and basically if you're the bookie, you want to collect player A, let's say he's picking Miami, player B is picking the opposite, the New York Jets, and you collect $100 from both, Miami wins, you pay out that extra, you know, 90% or 91% to uh, the winner. The loser gets nothing, and the sport book keeps uh, 9%, $9.09, 9% type profit on that bet. So, or you could just say that is 200, it's half of that, 4.5%. But you must win 40, 52.4% to overcome the, the vigorous or the bookie fee or whatever you want to call it. So it makes sense that they want to balance action because if you had, you know, 70% of the world betting this and 30% betting that, they'd have to pay a lot more money than they took in from the other side. So it makes perfect sense that they'd want to do that. Now the bet firm site also says that Las Vegas sports books and online shops a lot alike pay close attention to the numbers released by the Las Vegas sports consultants, which is a private company that sets odds. And it says online books like Bovada take into account their customer habits. So the question is, yeah, do they do those uh, Las Vegas sports consultants use uh, that type of data on past history? Obviously, they want to use some of that, or do they just grind out? sort of how a team's power rankings are uh, with a bunch of stats and determine a line in that manner. And so I don't know the answer to that directly, and it's really hard to find on the website. However, if you look at a, um, this is a consensus pick from covers.com, and you'll see that the people, you know, with the lines that were set here, uh, Milwaukee versus Brooklyn, you can see that 70% of the bets are coming in. Uh, Milwaukee was a slight favorite. And so 70% of the bets are coming in, um, at least on, on this. I know it's a little faker, but let's pretend you had money. And you know that the odds aren't even. As a matter of fact, 70%, 60%, 54%, and then another 54%. And then you get down to finally you got one game out of the five on the day that are 51%. And you don't see... Let me just do the in-depth details of this one. You really don't see a lot of point movement either um, coming out of the. You know, it was uh, this a lot of picks at one and a half, and it was proportion disproportionately towards Milwaukee, and at minus two, it was disproportionately Milwaukee, about the same overall. So everybody's picking Milwaukee here, and so the the lines don't seem to adjust. And if you pick another day, you get very similar results where Memphis. Uh, was actually an underdog, and 70% are picking at 70-30, you know, or 69-31, uh, 68-32, 67-33. So it's very frequent that they don't have, and that's, that's danger for the bookie. And I don't know why they would set their odds that way. If, if their job was to set the odds so that you got equal action, they're pretty terrible at it. And off the results page, uh, they actually have a line history out in... Um, cover so the same Milwaukee Brooklyn game we talked about earlier by the way Milwaukee did cover which means that you know if the if the if the bookies were taking money on that they would have lost 70 percent would have lost their um, the bookie would have lost money on and then you know the other 30 they would have took to pay it so they definitely would have lost money on that game now this has actual lines from like five dimes and bet on so those are you know real betting sites and you can see the lines 
didn't move. I moved from one and a half to two to two and a half, then back to two, then back to one and a half, then two, then one and a half. And this this payout didn't change a whole lot. Uh, they're trying to encourage a little bit of action, you know, against uh, on that particular one, but not a lot. So they and everybody else has roughly the same line at all these popular GT bets and sportsbook aug and stuff like that. So I don't think. Uh, you know, given that data, that you conclusively say that, you know, uh, although you would think that the odds makers want to uh, balance the action, the reality is they they just can't do that, and they and the lines don't move enough, and the payouts don't move enough, so they must be computing it, you know, at least in most part off statistics and some other types of data um, to set their odds. So what does that mean directly? Well, that's a, that's a very good question. And uh, for the purposes of this video, I know we'll get into some other stuff detail later, but it's, it's just basically that they're not uh, doing a public action 50-50. You know, there is a weighted public out there, and you're not going to get a 50-50 uh, type proposition. So that encourages you a little bit that at least according to the public that there's a good chance that, uh, you know, you're going to have to look at that in, in that skew and not necessarily the data side. They must be doing it data-based. And so unless your data is different than their data, um, you, you really almost, they have a lot of data and they're pretty professional at doing that. It just doesn't spend a whole lot of time on your data. You have to look for certain things uh, to break their patterns, um, but it's not public-based. And so the public doesn't seem to have a lot of influence on that line, at least not directly, unless they're doing a focus group or something like that. But for the most part, um, sometimes the public is a little smarter on, on that end. And you can take a look at that and figure out if you want to go against the public or with the public, um, depending on, on, on what you're looking at.